Hello everyone, welcome to Derek's Zoo Videos, and welcome back to the Louisville Zoo. On today's tour, we'll be exploring the award-winning Islands Complex, a revolutionary exhibit when it opened on Earth Day 1997. The Islands was recognized by the AZA for its excellence and innovation. It was the first of its kind to rotate a number of species through a series of habitats, including having predators and prey rotate in the same space. To be specific, the islands rotates five Southeast Asian mammals between three outdoor and one indoor exhibit, all of which we'll be meeting today since, with a little persistence, I was able to get footage of all five species on my visit. Just a short walk from the entrance, the island's arch comes into view. Bamboo shoots and other tropical plants line the winding trail, helping to transport you from northern Kentucky into the rainforest of Southeast Asia. However, the first species on our tour is not native to Asia or the rainforest. As a light rain begins to fall, we've arrived at the Penguin Cove, home to a colony of little blue penguins. Natives of the rocky coastlines of Australia, New Zealand, and other nearby islands, the little blue penguin is the smallest of the world's 18 penguin species, weighing just 3 pounds and growing just a little over a foot tall. The cove opened in 2016 with 9 individuals, but the colony has since grown, most recently with 3 chicks hatching in 2021. It is also worth noting that the penguins share their home with the Nene Goose, the official state bird of Hawaii. Today the rainforest is living up to its name, so as we wait for the rain to pass, here's a few more facts about the islands. The late Betty White, known for her animal rights activism, was in attendance for the island's opening day ceremony. In 2006, the island saw the first captive hatching of the rare white-throated ground dove. Taking advantage of a break in the downpour, we can dash to a nearby multi-species yard featuring the Australian black swan and the impressive Aldabra giant tortoise. Wild Aldabra tortoises can be found on the Aldabra Atoll and the Seychelles archipelago in the Indian Ocean. These colossal, slow-moving giants can weigh over 500 pounds and live well over 100 years. The zoo's oldest tortoise and oldest resident is Dot, who will celebrate her 87th birthday later this year. The habitat's third species is a rarity, the Oriental Stork. The Louisville Zoo is the only place in the country to see this bird. We're now moving into the Caviar House an Indonesian-inspired structure that acts as the first of two viewing shelters for the three outdoor rotational exhibits. On my visit, the far-right habitat contained the critically endangered Sumatran tiger. You're looking at Jinga, one of two females that called the Louisville Zoo home. She moved to Louisville from the Topeka Zoo in 2022. Tigers are among the animal kingdom's most feared predators, so you may be surprised to learn that a tiger is only successful on about 10% of its hunts. The Sumatran tiger is the smallest subspecies of tiger and the last of the island tigers, with around 400 individuals remaining, found only on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. These magnificent big cats are threatened by poaching and deforestation. Since the zoo does rotate the animals multiple times per day, I recommend making multiple trips through the islands when you visit. When I returned later in the day, this habitat now contained a Malayan tapir, famous for being the animal that nobody in the general public seems to know what it actually is. Tapirs are sometimes referred to as living fossils, since they have changed very little in the last 20 million years. The earliest tapirs appeared even before that during the Eocene, but were only about half the size of the tapirs we see today. While their long, prehensile snouts are somewhat reminiscent of an elephant's trunk, the tapirs' closest living relatives are horses and rhinos. The Malayan tapir is the largest species of tapir, able to grow to weigh over 800 pounds. This was the first time I had had the opportunity to see this unique species in 12 years, 
which is saying something for someone who visits as many zoos as I do. Finally, moving on, the middle rotational habitat is viewable from the Kebiar house from outside through the foliage, and again as we enter into a second viewing structure called the Banjar house. On this day, this exhibit displayed the zoo's pair of Siamangs, the largest species of gibbon with booming calls that can be heard up to two miles away, which are actually unique to each monogamous pair. Also within the Banjar house is the last and largest outdoor rotational habitat, where I saw the Babarusa, a mostly hairless wild pig from Sulawesi and several other Indonesian islands. In the Malay language, the name Babarusa means deer pig, which references the large tusks grown by males, which this individual is clearly not, that somewhat resemble a deer's antlers. Like most wild pigs, the Babarusa will eat almost anything from fruit to insects or even small mammals. Since the Babarusa's wild range is mostly free of natural predators, their main threat is poaching from humans. Currently, the IUCN lists the North Sulawesi Babarusa as a vulnerable species. So why does the Louisville Zoo rotate these animals? While pulling from the zoo's website, rotation keeps things fresh and enriching for these intelligent creatures and allows the keepers to offer the animals more variety in their day-to-day -day routines. Rotating animals also offers a more realistic experience for guests compared to what you might experience on a wildlife safari when the location and order in which you would see animals, or even if you would see a certain animal at all, is unpredictable. That does it for the outdoor habitats, but we're far from done, as we now enter into the Islands Pavilion. The first hall is referred to as the Survival Station. Its right wall is lined with a series of glass-fronted habitats where the colors of tropical birds dot the dimly lit hall. These residents include the recognizable Nicobar pigeon, the closest living relative to the dodo bird, who are capable of eating nuts that are so hard a human would need to use a hammer to open them. There's also the imposing Victoria crowned pigeon, the world's largest pigeon, found deep in the jungles of New Guinea. And the vibrant red-capped cardinal, a South American native, with a distinct melodious song. Opposite the birds is a similar glass-fronted exhibit with flying creatures of a different sort, the Rodriguez Flying Fox. At one time, this was considered the rarest bat in the world, with fewer than 100 individuals remaining. Captive breeding programs successfully brought the captive population up to 250 individuals in the U.S. alone by 2006. Today, wild populations have returned to the thousands, with some sources stating that there is now around 20,000 Rodriguez fruit bats in the wild. Next up is the Day Room, the fourth and only indoor rotational habitat for the island's mammals. In here, you'll often find orangutans, Asia's only great ape with a Malay name meaning man of the forest, and also my third favorite animal. Louisville is home to two pairs of orangutans. The pair I believe you're looking at are Teak and his half-sister Amber, who have been at the Louisville Zoo since 1996. They both enjoy studying visitors, and Amber in particular likes to pick out sparkly accessories. These two are hybrid orangutans, while the zoo's other pair, Segundo and Bella, are Sumatran orangutans, and have been together at the zoo since 1997. Through another set of doors, you're brought into the heart of the island's pavilion, and probably the highlight of the building in my opinion. An enclosed tropical walkthrough aviary, the forest or bird trail as it's known, is relatively short, but may seem longer if you take time to peer through the dense foliage to spot its winged residents. These include more Victoria crowned pigeons. In the bird world, it's usually the males who are looking pretty, but Victoria crowned pigeon males and females are equally fabulous since the species is not sexually dimorphic. Perched to the right of the entrance was a hyacinth macaw, who I believe was visiting temporarily from the zoo's South America zone. 
The golden-breasted starling of Northeast Africa feeds primarily on insects and termites instead of the fruit favored by many other starlings. There's the green-naped pheasant pigeon, who are classified as pigeons despite exhibiting more pheasant-like behavior, and many more which I've listed in the description below. The next room has a single habitat for a prehensile-tailed porcupine. And quickly moving along, we've arrived at the Penguin Cliffs, which reopened in 2019 after an extended closure. Flying above your head are Inca terns, a gregarious seabird that nest in thousands, and is distinct for their fashionable white handlebar mustaches. And replacing the rockhopper penguins when the exhibit reopened, you'll now find African penguins, a common sight in zoos, but African penguins are endangered facing threats of invasive species, commercial fishing, and habitat loss. The final room in the island's pavilion features two habitats for island reptiles, but at the time of my visit they held nothing, since both the rare Cuban crocodile and the fearsome Komodo dragon were off exhibit for maintenance. However, I was able to see both species in the nearby Herp Aquarium. Not the most exciting way to conclude a tour, but it's worth noting again that what we just saw was a brand new concept when the Louisville Zoo introduced it to the world. Almost 30 years later, I think it holds up rather well, and is still one of the top reasons to visit the Louisville Zoo. As the zoo states themselves, rotational exhibits have kind of become their signature, since to a lesser extent, rotations are now used in several other areas of the zoo. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of rotational habitats? As for our next tour, it's been a few months since we had a proper African safari, and I think it's time for another one, so look for that adventure coming next month.